12.39. Let's bring you some news just in now. ENCA has reliably been informed that DA leader Musi Maimane will step down. Samkele Maseko has the latest for us from the DA's headquarters there. Uh, and Samkele, that briefing by Musi Maimane is scheduled for 3 o'clock, but we've got some information that we can tell our viewers. Yes, indeed, uh, Michelle. It seemingly looks like uh, Musi Maimane will be tendering in his resignation uh, after the FedEx meeting of uh, the Democratic Alliance. We do know that he did have bilateral meetings this morning with uh, Helen Zilla, the new federal chairperson of council, where they discussed uh, the review report that recommended that Maimane must step down, that James South must also step down. He's gone. That uh, Paul Bowley, the CEO of uh, the Democratic Alliance, must step down. So it seemingly looks like uh, that press briefing, which was meant to be now, now at one o'clock during lunchtime of the federal executive has now been moved to three o'clock by the request of some of leaders of the Democratic Alliance for Musa Maimane to address the nation after the FedEx meet. I'm going to bring in uh, Avo Sarakinski to speak about this issue of uh, Maimane resigning from the Democratic Alliance. How do you read this today? Well, it, it was clear that his position was always going to be tenuous after the election and especially with the result of this report coming through, which was quite scathing of his leadership. So we were expecting the resignation at one o'clock in terms of the press conference that's been called, and that press conference has now been pushed forward to three o'clock. So two hour gap, what's gonna happen in those two hours? I suspect some serious horse trading where uh, the DA establishment might engage uh, Musi Mamani to find out if there's anything they can do at the last minute to keep him inside the camp. And at the same time, he'll be negotiating with his supporters to see what they advise him to do and what he thinks he should do in terms of pursuing the interests of the grouping that he's a part of in the DA. Uh, whether he resigns and they follow or whether he stays in as a backbencher and resigns later at a time which is more convenient. Uh, and the, the, whichever way it goes, the, the possibility of, of some kind of splinter formation is, is, is looking more and more likely. If you're saying Musimai Mane may be negotiated to remain as a backbencher, in resigning in what aspect? Resigning as a DA member or resigning as a DA leader? Resigning as DA leader. Uh, and he can still hold his seat in Parliament. And he might become a shadow minister of, of, of some portfolio. But uh, he, he, don't, he wouldn't have to leave the DA and, and all offices held that are associated with the DA, like being an MP. So if he resigns from the DA, he's going to have to resign his seat in Parliament as well. What, where does this leave the DA's transformation agenda, particularly after that report was so scathing on the race topic that uh, sometimes when debates are heated, the race card is pulled upon. Muslim Ayman wanted to build a democratic alliance that is more inclusive of all de South Africa's uh, demographics. Where does this leave this project? It, it, it seriously hurts the project, but we've got to be careful in how we unpack this. It's, it's, it's in my view inaccurate to say that the fight in the DA is between black and white. Uh, I think that it's, it's far more complicated than that. I think that for Helen Ziller to have won the chair, chairpersonship position, she had to have got black votes. There's no way she could have won that without support from black DA members. At the same time, you had white people supporting Maimani's camp. So that tells you that race is far more complicated in DA internal dynamics than a, a simple black white would, would suggest. What it does mean is that uh, whoever takes over or whether uh, Maimani continues, they're going to have to do some serious soul searching in terms of how they're going to present a coherent, attractive vision to the electorate on how this party is going to deal with racial legacies and how they're going to take uh, South Africa forward as a, as a party. Without that coherent, sharp, catchy vision that encapsulates all citizens, the DA will continue to have the troubles it's having now, irrespective of who the leadership is. Thank you very much, sir. So it looks as if that press briefing, which was meant to be now at one o'clock, has been moved to three o'clock. As many South Africans anticipate a resignation from Musi Maimani as the leader of the Democratic Alliance. What we have been told by our various sources as ENCA is that uh, he's not turning back. He's handing in his resignation, but there is a lot of horse trading currently going on behind those closed doors 
which my colleague Kamukhelo is showing you now, a lot of horse trading is going on. And may see Musimamani resigning or not resigning, should he be convinced to stay on. But he's seemingly sticking to his guns and leaving as per the recommendation of that panel review report on the performance of the DA. Yeah, oh, to be a fly on the wall in uh, the room there as that horse trading continues. Thanks very much for that. Sam Kedemaseko.